And now that we gave it a second to load, if we scroll down, we see that we have gathered a total of over 15,000 keywords, which is a ton of keywords. And a lot of these are irrelevant. So we really want to make sure that we properly filter. So what are the best keywords that you should be targeting with your Amazon PPC campaigns? Meaning what keywords are the most important when it comes to organic ranking, to highest converting, most profitable keywords, and also, what are the keywords you should not be targeting with your Amazon PPC because the ACoS will be way too high, way too low conversion rate that can ultimately hurt your rankings. All of that is gonna be covered in today's video. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Sumner Hobart. I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller. And every single week, I post tutorials and tips to help fellow sellers increase their profit through proven, simple, and effective strategies like the one you're about to learn today. So consider giving this video a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button for more. You won't be able to find these keywords with any other tool or trying this on your own, but I do have a free little known chat GPT hack that I'll be sharing only with viewers who make it to the end of this video. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so first things first is you'll wanna install the free Helium 10 Chrome extension, which has some free kind of components of it, like the review analyzer tool, which I use often, as well as some free number of daily uses for a couple of their tools. Um, but anyway, it's free. Ultimately, to go through this process, you'll need to get the paid plan, which will give you access to everything within the Chrome extension and the web app, which are kind of synced. And I'll show you how they work. But basically, the Chrome extension allows us to gather data on Amazon while we're actually on like Amazon.com or Amazon UK or whatever, and then pull that into their web app. And I'll show you how everything works. But first, you just kind of need to install this, which you can do right now because it's free. Then we can continue on. So next, we're going to go to amazon.com and then type in your main product keywords. So let's say we're selling women's headbands. We're going to hit enter. Okay. Then what we're going to do is now that we have the Chrome extension installed, we'll see it up here kind of in the top right of the screen. Go ahead and click on it. And specifically within the Chrome extension, we want the X-Ray tool. So click on X-Ray Amazon product research, let it load. And basically we're extracting all of the important data, like estimated revenue data, price, you know, reviews, review rating, all this different kind of data. And what I like to do is organize in descending order here in the revenue column. So any of these can kind of sort and filter. So I like to sort from revenue highest to low. Okay. Which shows us, you know, here's the top selling product for this keyword. Here's the next and so on. And make sure an important point, what I like to do is to skip over the sponsored products because this is basically um, an ad that's showing up here on the page, which I want to ignore because someone could be paying to show up here and they make $58,000 or $57,000 a month, but they're not really organically ranking for this. In this case, this product is ranking and they have an ad, but as I like to kind of exclude these. So we go up to filter here. We want to hide sponsored products from results and then hit apply filters. There we go. Okay. So now they're all gone. So we want to work with this list from highest to low. And what we want to do specifically is choose the 10 most similar products to the product that we're advertising. Okay. Not the top 10. What a lot of sellers do, the mistake they make when using healing 10 is doing this you know, one, two, three, all the way down and do 10. No, you want to be really kind of critical and it might require a little bit of extra work, but you can kind of just hover over here and see the image kind of enlarge You can click on the listing to see more data. Basically we want us to make sure we're targeting the most similar. So let's say we're selling more kind of like colorful, stylish headbands, not really for working out. That's like our product that we're advertising. So we want to go and see, let's say this right here is really similar. Say this one here, right? I'm just going to go through again, just as an example and kind of pick some, but it completely depends on your product. Yeah. So more colorful, more stylized and make sure we're just choosing the 10. As we see, we have six so far. So we need four more. So let's do one, two, three, and four. Okay. There we go. So total of 10 selected. You'll understand why I chose 10, but basically 10 is having enough data, but not having too much to where we get kind of into the weeds. And what's really cool here is obviously you can see the data for each kind of seller, all of this here, but for keyword research specifically, what we're going to do at, now that they're selected, click on the run Cerebro tool. And what that's going to do is it's going to open the Helium 10 web application and specifically the Cerebro web app. As we see, all the data is here. Helium 10 is automatically going to what's called a reverse ASIN search. All of the keywords that each of these ASINs is organically ranking for 
we're gonna pull all that data and put it here. So all the keywords that this ASIN right here is ranking for, for this ASIN, for this ASIN, it's all compiled together into one place. And I'll show you how to properly filter. And once this data kind of goes through, it's a really, really quick process. And now that we gave it a second to load, if we scroll down, we see that we have gathered a total of over 15,000 keywords, which is a ton of keywords. And a lot of these are irrelevant. So we really want to make sure that we properly filter. So what we want to do is here, make sure your filter tab is expanded. And then here's the specific areas that I recommend filtering. Although obviously there's so many here that you can kind of play with. Here's my favorite, do kind of a quick and dirty Amazon kind of keyword research. That's also very comprehensive. So first is position or rank. So what I like to do is one through 48. There's 48 positions on page one of Amazon. So basically I'm inputting this filter and say, hey, you know, Helium 10, show me all the keywords where at least one of these products here is ranking between position one to position 48 or basically page one. So word count, minimum of two, just because a single word like shoe, shirt, you know, Mike, things like that is way too, it's, it's not relevant to us. We want at least two words to be somewhat relevant. For match type, we want to select organic. What does that mean? Like I said before, it's where, you know, these keywords right now, this is all the keywords that they're either organically ranking for or they're paying to rank. I want to see where they're organically ranking for. Just as kind of a little insight, you can kind of think about Amazon like a search engine, right? It's like a data source. It's not just a place to sell your products. It's a place that you use for data to inform you about products. If I see that a product is ranking on page one, uh, or you know several of these products are ranking on page one for a particular keyword, Amazon's telling me, hey, Sumner, these products are relevant for these keywords, okay? It's another way of thinking about it. it is, it's not just like, oh, they sell well. well why do they sell well? Because they're relevant, okay? So if they're organically ranking, it's relevant. If they're paying to rank, if their sponsored product ad is, is showing up and not their organic listing, is it? It could be, but maybe not, right? Because then why, why isn't Amazon automatically showing them if they're relevant, right? That means that they might be irrelevant. If you didn't understand that, ignore it. Just, uh, you can work with this. So position, word count, match type. And then the big one here is competitor rank. In general, very general rule. If you have 10 solid competitors here, 10 ASINs, I recommend setting this to six. Why? What does this mean? This is my favorite. This is why you see 10. It's amazing. Okay. So, to make it simple, the more competitors that are ranking for a keyword, the more important that keyword is going to be to us. Because if there's a bunch of our competitors all ranking for the same keyword, it's like, okay, they're all ranking. That means I should be ranking. If they're all targeting it with your Amazon advertising, I should probably at least be testing it with my Amazon ads. Does that make sense? So, you know, if there's only like, if there's a keyword and only one of our competitors is ranking, it means it might not be super relevant to us. Or if there's only two or three, six means, you know, that's, why six? That's over half. Five out of 10 is 50%. That means 60% of our competitors are ranking for a particular term. So by setting this filter, our results are only going to show keywords where at least six, if not more, of our competitors are organically ranking on position one through 48 with at least two, two words long um, organically, right? So at least six of our competitors are ranking for these keywords organically on page one and each phrase will have at least two words. Okay, that's that's basically like a sentence kind of describing what's here. And you can play around with other ones as well, but this is really, really solid and very simple. So we'll go ahead and hit on apply filters. Remember, we start off with about 15,000 keywords and we're gonna watch this list dramatically reduce. And that's a good thing because we only wanna focus on our most important. Then what I like to do is actually organize by search volume here in descending order. Some of those low search volume keywords are also really important because this is actually an estimate. So I have you know, certain keywords I'm targeting where Helium 10 or Jungle Scout or Zon Guru estimates you know, zero monthly searches and it makes like several sales for that single keyword every month. So keep in mind, all these tools are super helpful, but they're not 100% accurate. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. So what you could do, and this is what other sellers kind of have done to add one additional filter is for search volume. So right here at the top left. So minimum search volume of 100 and hit apply just to kind of really condense our list. Again, we really want to focus on those most important keywords. We went from, I think, over 600 now down to 473. We just got rid of all of those keywords that are under estimated 100, which is totally fine. Okay, so now we have this amazing keyword list 
And keep in mind, the more demand and the higher kind of c competition your category is, generally the bigger your keyword list is gonna be. The less competitive, then smaller it's gonna be. So it is relative to the product that you're selling. So this is a really, really solid list to work with that we have, and we can export this data, which I like to do as CSV. So I'm gonna go ahead, export data as a CSV file. So now I've copied and pasted the exported data here into a Google Sheet, which I prefer to work with here on Mac. It's a bit easier for me. You can use Excel or whatever you like. And again, we have the exact same data here as we had in Cerebro. We have the keyword phrase here and then search volume. These are the two overall most important because generally the higher the search volume means the more sales that that keyword can generate, which means it's more important in general, right? But you're going to find that certain keywords for your product, like down here, are going to actually convert better and generate more sales than some of these more competitive ones up here. But that's a little bit going too far into the weeds. So what I like to do personally is from this, I'm going to Command C to copy uh, column A here, create a new tab, Command V to paste. And basically, I'm just going to quickly run through this list and get in the mind of my target audience and think, if someone searches for this keyword on Amazon, are they highly likely to click and buy my product based on my ad? If you're not really sure, then maybe put it to the side for now. If it's like, oh no, this is important, like 100%, then keep it there, right? So anything that's irrelevant, I'm gonna get rid of. So you know, headband for women. Let's say we're selling a women's hair bands or women's headbands, I should say. So headband for women, definitely relevant. Hair bands. In this case, that makes sense. Most of these hair bands are for women. That's kind of inherent. But if there were a lot of male headbands, women's headbands, then maybe I would get rid of this because I'm like, it's a little bit too broad because it could appeal to both genders. But in this case, I'll, let's just say it's relevant, so I'm gonna leave it, right? And so on, headbands, headband. Now in this case, there's a little bit of debate in the Amazon PPC community about targeting both single and plural of the same keyword. In my opinion, you only need one. So in this case, you know, headbands has slightly higher search volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because we don't need to repeat that twice. Same thing if there's hair band somewhere. But hair wrap and head wrap, those are two different keywords. So you wanna target both of those. Don't make the mistake of like, oh, it's, it's good enough. These are two totally different keywords. And you gotta think, why would someone choose hair wrap instead of head wrap? Maybe someone's specifically looking for the hair where someone wants the entire head. It could potentially relate to a totally different product. Sometimes not, sometimes it's very, very similar. But you just have to kind of use common sense. So anyway, the gist here is, you just wanna manually review this. That's it at the end of the day, go through. Anything that you're not really sure of, you can kind of set to the side. And one little kind of additional hack that I like to do is I've, if I'm not really sure, like hair wrap. Okay, is this relevant to my product? I Command C to copy, I go to Amazon, Command V to paste and enter. And then I just quickly look through and overall, scroll past the sponsored, are 50% to 100% of the products that show up here very similar to my product or are they very different? So in this case, if I sell headbands, I'm seeing, okay, that's not a headband. That's a whole hair wrap, hair wrap, hair wrap, hair wrap. I'm like, okay, ah. So in this case, if I sell a headband, someone who types in hair wrap, are they looking for a headband or are they looking for a hair wrap? I see that the majority of these products, those are sponsors we can kind of ignore. The majority of these products are not, you know, very similar to mine. So in this case, if I'm launching a brand new product, just a little kind of tactic that I like to use is where I'm, looking for keywords for new product launches, I wanna make sure that 50 to 100% of the products that show up in search results for that keyword are extremely relevant to my product. They're basically like very similar. Obviously your product should be unique and different, right? But they should be very similar. These are, you know, head wraps. This product right here, for example, it's completely different from like a headband. So again, you have to know your product, you have to know your audience. And when you're not sure, go to Amazon. Amazon's gonna be the data source to kind of educate you and also keep in mind, there's no perfect science. You won't know if a product or if a keyword is gonna be profitable or high converting or whatever for your product until you test it. So kind of keep that in mind. You're just kind of trying to get rid of and weed out anything that's really highly irrelevant or likely gonna be super competitive. All of that you're gonna kind of get rid of and you'll have a nice refined list. Then with this list, you'll target these keywords with your Amazon PPC campaigns. And as a little bonus tip to make sure that you're not leaving any keywords or ranking or profit on the table is to use ChatGPT to vet your keyword list. Like I said, all of these tools, especially Healing 10, are extremely beneficial and can get you anywhere from 80 to 100% of the way there. But there's sometimes those kind of little margin of error or those little kind of additional opportunities that these tools won't pick up on that ChatGPT can. So ChatGPT is a free AI tool that also has a paid version. 
I prefer the paid version, but of course you can do this for free. And I would recommend doing this regardless of whatever keyword research process looks like, just to make sure that you're not missing out on anything and basically getting a second professional opinion from an AI. So I've logged in here to my ChatGPT account. And here's just a general prompt that you can give ChatGPT. So, hey, Amazon PPC expert, I'm selling a colorful woman's headband on Amazon and I wanna make sure I'm targeting all of the most relevant keywords for my product and not leaving any ranking and profit on the table. Here's my current keyword list. Any important keywords that you think are missing, please list all of them and do not repeat any keywords already on my list. So look at my list. Is there anything that I'm missing? And keep in mind, the more details you give about your product, the better. So this is very general here. What I'd recommend for you is to give way more detail. What are the dimensions, the size, the fabric? What you can do is you can even just copy and paste the product description and your key product features or bullet points here and that'll give plenty of detail. So really down and dirty way of kind of getting, you know, making sure you're not missing anything. Here's our keyword list. I'm gonna hit enter. And then we're gonna see kind of what ChatGPT comes up with. Oh, let me scroll back down. Yeah, and you can see literally in seconds, right? These are all additional keywords that are not already on our list. So again, manually go through. Are any of these keywords relevant to our product? Copy, paste them to make sure they're on your list. Some of these will not be for dreadlocks for ponytails, for buns, for workouts. And again, with Amazon PPC, this is different from optimizing your Amazon listing, you know, your title, your bullet points, all of that. Because what's the worst case scenario? Let's say that headband for concert. Let's say that that's relevant to your product. Like someone types in headband for concert. Yeah, someone, if someone types that in, they see your ad, they're pretty likely to buy. It's worth testing. But a lot of, you know, advertisers or sellers get hung up and they're like, but what if there's no search volume? You only pay per click, right? Amazon PPC, pay per click. If no one clicks on your ad, you don't pay anything. So worst case scenario, you, you don't spend a dime. Best case scenario is you scoop up profitable sales because AI generated this list. If everyone else is using similar tools like Helium 10 and Jungle Scout, and I'm able to kind of get these additional keywords with ChatGPT, that's gonna give me an edge. Like I said, if no one searches for it, no worries. If people are searching for it, I might be the only advertiser or one of very few that is bidding on this. So the cost per click is gonna be lower, you know, and I can get some profitable sales, assuming that it's relevant. So don't just blindly copy and paste. Make sure you manually kind of just go through. I've identified a lot of super important keywords for all the products that we're launching. So I almost didn't wanna share this, but I wanna give everything away to you and hope you found this valuable. If you did, be sure to subscribe for more. And if you, are going to use Helium 10, which is you know the tool that I use for Amazon PPC keyword research and that I recommend. I'll have my link in the description section as well. We're going to get 20% off if you want to use it for six months or just 10% off every month. You can use uh, the codes here, but I'll have this link there. And do keep in mind, you know, YouTube, this is kind of how my wife and I make a living. So we do get commission on every sale. Really appreciate if you use our link when signing up for Helium 10. Obviously beneficial to you to get that discount and then beneficial to us as well. So Really appreciate your support. If you have questions, let me know in the comment section. And as always, thanks so much for watching. God bless you and your business. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.